In a final test, before I move on to installing the compact fluorescent guts into a fixture of sorts and mounting it somewhere, can this run an F34T12? Let's find out. And apparently it can. That is using 0.17 amps. That's 0.18 amps. 13.4 watts, 21.8 volt amps. It's actually putting out a decent amount of light. It's lining up the workbench area. It's nowhere near full brightness, but it's actually it's not bad. On to the main point of this video. I have two of these generic, cheap, F15T8 fixtures, both of which failed in identical manners in that, during normal operation with a healthy, relatively new tube, the power transistors went pop, and the tube went out, and the fixture hasn't worked since. So, this cheap, crappy little board, exact same on the other one, I'm gonna get rid of those, probably salvage a few bits and pieces off them, but other than that, just trash. However, they have sockets on them, and they're the right length. So, a piece of wood or something to hold these two side by side. Enough space in here to slide the CFL driver board in there. And a little bit of a wiring modification to run two tubes in series. And suddenly the fluorescent hack is now a working fixture, complete with a cord and a switch. Side-by-side -side comparison of the failed electronic ballast from the F15T8 fixtures and the CFL ballast that I'm going to be replacing it with. CFL ballast has an inductor and this little capacitor there for input noise filtering. The ballast from the fixtures that died does not. There's no filtering. It goes straight to rectifier and reservoir cap. Other than that, they're nearly identical in layout. Have a feedback transformer, two transistors for switching, two caps on the output side and an output inductor transformer. Pretty much same deal here, except this is a bit sturdier built. And that's it. A few slightly crispy surface mount components on the back here, to be expected since it blew up. Again, a few surface mounts here, but in a bit better shape. Got the fluorescent hack wired up permanently. Exactly the same setup as when I was testing it with just alligator leads clipped to the CFL base. Comes out one side into the tube socket, through the tube to the other socket out there, across to there into another tube, back over, and return. Alright, we are ready for the first test of the assembled fluorescent hack. Power strip on. Variac is on and drawing 0.4 amps. It's at zero. Fluorescent hack is on. No change in current. And slowly, Oop. and it looks like we have liftoff. Yep, 115 volts out on the variac, and it appears to be working. Drawing 0.24 amps from the line, 23.6 watts, 30.3 volt amps been running about 25 minutes. Hottest part where the ballast is over here, that's now at about 31 degrees. The ambient in here is 17 and a half degrees, so that's not getting too warm. Tubes are warm to the touch, but not hot. Power draw is stabilized at 16 and a half watts, and 
about 26 volt amps. Here is the finished fluorescent hack. Got the downward facing side with the two lamps in it. Then on the back, a piece of scrap wood to hold them together with some lengths of steel wire attached to the ends. This steel wire can then be hooked around any supports screwed into the ceiling, and it's a tiny hanging suspended shop light. There's the fluorescent hack installed on the ceiling. It's now bright in the walkway again, since the failure of one of the lights that now make up the fluorescent hack left it dark, and then the light I replaced that with got repurposed. So for a while it was pretty dark in there when the main shop light was off. But as you can see, all better now, except the mess. I'm working on that. Thanks for watching.